Hi guys, I have come up with another video I can see. It's basically about the type of uh, ratings on an engine and uh, lots of interviews happen happening around these days and a uh, lot of people are getting the question what do you mean by uh, derating an engine and what is flex thrust, what is a flat rated engine etc. So I also decided to do my own bit, bit of research on the topic and uh, so these are my findings what I am bringing to you um, it should help to clarify some of your doubts I hope so uh, engines are certified to deliver standard thrust depending on flight conditions ok so like if you remember during your flying training or whenever you went to a climb mode there was a particular uh, in the setting right or uh, whenever you went to uh, like you started leveling off there was a particular throttle setting right or even for a descent so for every phase of flight uh, there is a related or corresponding uh, power setting okay? and so that's uh, what is the gist of the story what we are going to have a look at today and uh, what do you mean by a uh, rating? A rating is a predefined power setting that the pilot can select which may be appropriate for a particular flight condition. Okay, that's a, that's a definition for that. Now, uh, before we proceed, I would like to look into a few definitions of uh, certain settings. So, first one is maximum takeoff thrust. Maximum takeoff thrust is the thrust which you uh, can obtain or it's the maximum thrust which you can obtain okay from an engine and uh, this can be used only for five minutes in the takeoff envelope now why is this because as you all know the demand from the engine is at its peak during the liftoff right the, the this is the time when the highest stresses and temperatures are developed in an engine so that is why it's permitted only for about 5 minutes otherwise if you continuously like if an engine is continuously susceptible to these kinds of uh, criteria stresses the engine may fail that's why and uh, one thing to be noted over here is that the maximum take of thrust it is just generally 5 to 10 percent more than the maximum continuous thrust max continuous thrust is self explanatory it is the maximum thrust which you can continuously use and one more is there that is the maximum climb thrust again self explanatory it is the maximum thrust which you can use while climbing and uh, this thrust that is MCL can be equal to MCT uh, now uh, what is this uh, why do we uh, look into this in such a deep way so the reason being uh, I have put it down in two statements in red over here. I want you to think about these two statements for about 5 to 10 seconds. Let's have a look at the first one. Higher the thrust available means shorter the runway required. So if you think about it, uh, you have more power available when you have a higher thrust setting available. Which means that it will enable you to reach your V speeds, your minimum uh, V1, your V2 etc v1 v2 vr all these speeds by con uh, consuming a shorter runway or you can reach these speeds faster understood and uh, the second statement the higher the thrust available the greater the payload can be uh, it's nothing much to explain over here if you have more power force available you can carry more payload so that's it now uh, how is this important because the first thing the first statement is important because this determines uh, your usable airports as in uh, keep aside all the other factors just think about the runway length so in that case if your engine has the capacity to produce more power in which means that it can take off from airports which have shorter runways but 
uh, need to remember that it is not the only criterion rather it is just one of many criteria which determines a usable airport and the second and the uh, topic of today actually is the economics of flight okay so that is uh, what the second statement here basically looks at so let's examine it in detail now here the terminology comes derating the engine what do you understand by derating the engine split the word derating the engine that is decreasing the rating of an engine as in an aircraft can take off with thrust setting lesser than the maximum takeoff thrust and this in turn reduces the wear and tear on the engine and how is this done firstly by increasing the engine life and secondly it reduces the maintenance cost so basically the airline is saving a lot of big bucks over here but so like anything every coin has two sides so in this case derating the engine also has a negative side to it suppose you are applying d rating to the maximum climb thrust in this case the climb will be slower and the fuel consumption also sorry the fuel consumption also increases but only slightly so if you compare the amount of money you save by reducing the wear and tear on the engine and the money extra extra money that you have to spend because of d rating the engine it proves quite advantageous to do the derating of the engine okay so even at the cost of efficiency airlines do go for the derating now another term you may come across is flat rating or a flat rated engine i want to point out here derating is not flat rating what is a flat rated engine an engine which has a higher output rating is limited or constrained to a lower output setting as in an engine can produce 300 or 3000 bhp but it is constrained or forced to produce only 2000 bhp that's called flat rating and this is mainly done to due to airframe limitations as in the even though the engine can produce that kind of power the airframe cannot sustain it. so that's why flat rating is basically done and uh, by now you might have understood that flat rating is done mechanically while the engine is fitted to the aircraft so it's kind of more or less a permanent change unless you ch take out that engine and uh, put it on another airframe or something otherwise it's kind of a permanent change itself okay now uh, the flat rated engine output remains constant till a certain altitude and this applies to all engines actually the power starts dropping after a certain altitude and why because we all know because the as you go higher the temperature reduces and your um, air density actually decreases so the engine needs to put in extra effort to maintain the same amount of power okay and uh, now i want you to compare a flat rated engine with a normal engine uh, so suppose you have two engines engine a and engine b now engine a has a rating or can produce 3000 bhp but it is flat rated to 2000 bhp at 10000 feet okay and then there is engine b whose power output is rated at 2000 bhp 2000 bhp okay again at um, now uh, both these uh, engines start climbing okay everything is going on well they all maintain both of them maintain 2000 bhp now engine a is rated for 2000 bhp at 10000 feet meaning that after 10000 feet the power starts dropping okay so but if you look at engine b actually what is happening here is that probably at 5000 feet the engine power would start dropping now why is this difference because as i said a flat rate engine is actually capable of producing more power right so even though uh, for engine a the power should have started dropping after 5000 feet 
it is able to maintain that same power for another additional 5000 feet because it is capable of producing excess power okay i hope you understand the point okay and uh, don't uh, think too much about these values which i just put in those are just random values whatever came to my mind now d rating and flex thrust flex thrust is another terminology it's very similar to d rating however it has a uh, slight difference also which i'll come to shortly now d rating is reducing the take off thrust okay and uh, it's an fms of fadag logic compared to the flat rating i mentioned it's a mechanical change which is being done in this case it's an fms of fadag logic okay to give a percentage of the maximum thrust available and this is usually allowed to drop by a maximum of 25% of the maximum thrust not more than that okay and uh, in a, on a d rated engine there is a separate set of uh, take off limitations and performance data which exist in the afm why you are using a d rated d rating of the engine and uh, to use this you need to request it to the manufacturer who will be giving you the data uh, one thing we need to note here is that we the minimum speeds your vmcg minimum control speed on ground and your minimum control speed in air vmca these two speeds vary with temperature altitude and thrust and these two speeds are lower for a lower thrust remember this sentence that these speeds are lower for lower thrust because it, the d rated engine okay can use or it is permitted by regulations to use this redu reduced minimum speeds and that is why you can use a d d rating of the engine on a contaminated run okay, i've put down a, a few formulas over here uh, which will show you how your rotation speeds your v1 speed and your v2 speed is affected by lower vmca and vmcg okay now the first two lines indicate or these are the factors that determine your take off distance and the last line is the one which determines your accelerate stop distance again you need to remember these are not the only factors which determine your take off distance and your accelerate stop distance but for now these are the ones which we are going to deal with okay i hope you understand that now when you are using or when you are derating the engine you are going to stick to lower speeds compared to the full power output speeds so uh, as i said derated thrust can be used on a contaminated runway now one more thing very important to be remembered is that you do not use toga even though full flat flat rated thrust is available why because of two reasons one is that you basically do not need it as it is it, it has already been catered for while you were doing the v speed calculations when you may uh, calculated your lower v speeds and the second and more important thing is the controllability remember that your minimum control speeds have been reduced while using the d rated thrust setting right so if you are going to give uh, use a full power output your minimum speeds are going to increase and this may affect controllability of the aircraft and uh, one more thing is that uh, flex thrust can also be used after derating an engine uh, it's basically used on a take off to take off basis according to the ambient conditions moving on yes uh, flex thrust see the basic difference between d rating the engine and flex thrust is that in this case uh, as in, in d rating it's basically deciding that okay uh, there is a point a and on the power lever and you decide that you are not going to move the lever any further than that that's how d rating is done okay and in flex thrust it's like you are like 
telling the engine that it is a lot hotter than it actually is and the engine cannot produce as much thrust in high temperature conditions as compared to lower temperatures so the engine thinks that it's you know uh, working at higher temperature conditions and it produces a lesser n1 or basically it in the engine reduces the n1 that's the more correct way to say it so and again this is also a software tweak just like the derating of the engine and uh, here the there's a big difference between the derated engine and a flex thrust is that take off speeds with full thrust will still apply okay and that is the reason why flex thrust cannot be applied on contaminated runways like earlier i said on a derated engine your v speeds are going to be reduced your minimum speeds right but here speeds take off speeds with full thrust will apply and over here i've just mentioned a kind of an example these are all random values that popped into my mind okay suppose an aircraft weighs 75000 kgs and your standard uh, speeds are going to be v1 160 knots vr 170 knots and v2 180 knots okay but your maximum take off weight is 85000 kg so you basically have a margin of 10000 kg how do you use that to your advantage so you find out what is the maximum temperature the aircraft can fly at 75000 kg and you see that it's 50 degrees celsius suppose that 50 degree is much higher than what is actually around us right now or the ambient temperature so you look down at the graphs okay and find out that for 50 degrees celsius and 75000 kg uh, your speeds are v1 is 140 knots we are 150 knots and v2 160 knots which you can now apply so you can okay uh, use a lower power setting which will give you these v speeds so that is the advantage over here just give it a little bit of thought and uh, uh, you know 5 to 10 seconds maybe or maybe a little more if you need but uh, uh, once you think a little bit of it about it uh, i sure i am very sure that you will understand the concept now there's one more term i came across while i was doing my research uh, that is take off thrust wet or dry so i thought i should put down this also so and uh, what do you understand by wet take off thrust or dry take off thrust uh, now the, this is basically uh, indi an indicating or an indicator of how the extra thrust is produced during the take off now older turbojet engines were injected with water during the later stages of compression to reduce the combustion temperature now once the temperature was reduced it allowed for more fuel to be injected into the hot section which in turn produced more thrust for take off and this is called wet take off thrust okay and uh, modern day engines they do not require water augmentation the reason be being that they start itself from a much cooler temperature so whatever the inbuilt cooling mechanism is that is more than sufficient for uh, the engine to maintain or stay within its uh, limits of temperature even during the take off phase okay so that's it basically guys thanks for watching and if you have any queries or suggestions put it down in the comment section below and i hope you all like it uh, and remember to like and share Thanks for watching.